Hello, how are you doing? It is a very bright, sunny day here in London, uh, which is appropriate because I think it kind of matches the buoyant mood in the country now that the Prime Minister has laid out a plan of dates to get out of lockdown, you know, a tentative plan. As we all know from the past year, any plans aren't for the future aren't definite, uh, but it's at least, you know, it's given some hope, I think. And with the, the sunnier, warmer weather, I, I think it's just sort of lifted the mood of the country a bit. And I'm definitely looking forward to being able to get outside more and hopefully meet people again. So also I have a big group of new books to talk about. And uh, so yeah, I'm eager to discuss all of these. Um, these are books which publishers have kindly sent me and that have been published in February. And I feel like I should say, uh, since I get some comments sometimes asking, how do you actually read all of the, these books? And the honest truth is, I don't expect to actually read all of these books because that's the amount of new books I have coming in. That's just not humanly possible. But the point is that these are all books that I would ideally like to read if I had infinite amount of time. And uh, and part of the reason why I do this, obviously, is to, to hopefully introduce you to some new books that you might not have come across before and that you might want to give a chance uh, reading, uh, but also to get your, your feedback. If and you've read any of these books and you really loved them, please let me know in the comments below because this is partly me mentally sorting out what I want to read next. And if I get a comment saying, you know, I read this book and, and loved it, uh, that sort of pushes it up on my TBR list and, and hopefully I'll, I'll get to it soon. Uh, so yeah, I really appreciate feedback and also just hearing from you which of these books you're most interested in, in reading yourself. Uh, so, so that's why I do this. I don't know, I feel like every once in a while I need to, to, to state this, but also specifically because book prize season is coming up and I know I'm going to want to read a lot of titles that are listed for these prizes. I want to get into reading some of these other books, you know, which might eventually end up being on book prize lists themselves. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, that these, uh, there's books I want to get to before I start reading some of the, the book prize lists. And actually, I just got my copy of the, the novel Lot or Lot, uh, which is on the Republic of Consciousness prize um, list, uh, which I talked about in a previous video. And uh, I ordered after reading all of the summaries of the books because I think this sounds really great. So I'm hoping to read this soon. Uh, but yes, uh, there are also a number of other books, new books um, that I'm hoping to read soon as well. So why don't I get to start talking about them? <laughs> First off is a novel I have have actually started reading. I've read the first few chapters of this so far and it's really good and has a beautiful cover, doesn't it? It's Before My Actual Heart Breaks by Tish Delaney. And this is a novel set in Northern Ireland uh, about a woman who, um, it's sort of interesting how it's, a, it's sort of looking back on her life. She's at a point in her life where she's had a number of children that have grown up and gone and her husband has left. And so she's sort of on her own uh, thinking what to do next and she's thinking back on her early life and recounting uh, the stages of her life, I think, going up to this point and then trying to decide where she wants to go from here. And uh, and I know in March um, there is a Irish uh, literature readathon um, that a few booktubers are organizing and running. And so I'm, I'm hoping to join in that too because yeah, I, I really love Irish literature and, and want to read more. And uh, this sounds like a great new novel that I'm really enjoying so far. Next is a new novel I'm especially looking forward to reading uh, because of another recent novel that, that I read, uh, all centered around the country of Uganda. And uh, so this is Kololo Hill by Nima Shaw. And this is a novel about a couple in Uganda who have just got married and are just like starting their own business. Um, but this is, takes place in the early 70s, I think in 72? Yeah, 1972, uh, when, by the way, look at the inside covers of this. Isn't that really beautiful? Uh, yeah, that's that's gorgeous. Uh, anyway, so yes, this takes place in 1972 uh, when there was a military coup in Uganda. And as part of that coup and the new military regime that was ruling the country, uh, all Asians in the country were forced to, to leave and surrender their property. And recently I read the novel We Are All Birds of Uganda, and I absolutely loved that novel. I talked about it in my uh, 
uh, January wrap up. And uh, yeah, it's a brilliant book. And so I want to read more about Uganda. And a big part of that novel is about this, this incident in the early 70s in this military coup and the Asians that were forced to, to leave the country of Uganda. And this follows another couple in that. So I'm looking forward to, to learning more about that and reading another like fictional version of, of this story. Summer Brother by Jape Robin. This is translated from the, the Dutch by David Doherty. And this sounds like a really heartbreaking story. Uh, it's about a 13 year old boy who lives in a trailer with his divorced and very emotionally distant father. And he has a brother who is severely physically and mentally disabled. Um, who lives in an institution. And uh, one summer when the institution is undergoing renovations, um, his brother is sent back home to live with um, him and his father in this trailer. And the father just doesn't care about the brother and doesn't attend to him. So this 13-year-old boy is left to care for his brother who he doesn't understand really what's wrong with him or the proper way to care for him. So it's him struggling to, to, yeah, to care for him. And yeah, that sounds sounds absolutely heartbreaking, but like a very moving story. And Colin Toybin um, says that J. Robin uh, handles delicate, dangerous material with subtlety and sympathy. Then I have a novel that I just love the sound of this premise. Um, it's so super host. Superhost by Kate Russo. And uh, this is about a man who's a painter um, who once had a very promising career and was sort of the, the new thing on the art scene. And uh, But now in his later years, his artwork has sort of gone out of fashion and, uh, and he finds himself uh, almost impoverished. And he has this big home in West London. So he, uh, he goes to live in the, the studio that's part of this home the studio in the garden um, to um, while he's living in the studio he rents out on Airbnb um, his large house and so it's about the people that move into this house and the relationship he strikes uh, with them um, so yeah that, that just sounds like such an interesting story. Mouthpieces by Amar McBride this is a very short new book of three short stories uh, by this extraordinary Irish writer I, I think her writing is so fascinating and so this would make another great addition for the Irish Lit Readathon. And uh, and so this was written while uh, Amir McBride was um, given a place at the, the Beckett Research Institute, I, I think. And so these are pieces sort of inspired by that. And her writing is often compared to Samuel Beckett because she she often writes this sort of like inner voice monologue and in her, her fiction. And uh, yeah, so these are three um, new short stories um, from the point of view of different women. Tomorrow They Won't Dare to Murder Us by Joseph Andras and it's translated from the French by Simon Lesser. So this is a novel about a young revolutionary who plants a bomb in a factory outside of Alger uh, during the Algerian war and uh, but the the bomb is um, found before it um, it goes off. It's meant to go off in the middle of the night when no one is actually in the factory factory. So um, the, the young revolutionary didn't plan for anyone to actually be hurt in it. But, um, but the bomb is stopped and he's arrested and he's sentenced to death. And uh, the question is, what if um, this young revolutionary was a European um, part of an anti-colonialist movement? And uh, so this caused a big sensation when it was first published in France. It won the Prix Goncourt Award for first novel. And yeah, I think it sounds fascinating. Then I have a number of classic novels. Uh, which have been reprinted recently. Um, so first, I have a few books by Sylvia Townsend Warner, who is a really fascinating author from the early 20th century. And I've read her novel, Summer Will Show. Um, that's the only book I've read by her, but I've been wanting to read more by her because I had very mixed feelings about that book, but I did think it was absolutely fascinating. And, and each of the, the stories of, of these books sound really good, and they also have really beautiful covers. 
Willows. Um, so first, there is Lolly Willows, uh, which is about a young woman who is gentle and uh, sort of very accommodating, uh, but she leaves her, her home and her family to go study witchcraft. And of course, this scandalizes her whole family. Um, so yeah, that sounds like a really great story. Uh, then there is Mr. Fortune's Maggot, um, which is about a, a man who was previously um, working in the banking sector, um, but he leaves that job to move to a tropical island uh, to um, follow what he thinks is his calling to spread the word of Christianity. And he interacts with a number of people on that, that island and then finds that his faith is severely tested. Uh, so, And then uh, the third book is The True Heart, um, which is about a 16-year-old um, girl who goes to work in the remote Essex marshes, and there she falls in love uh, with a man named Eric. Uh, and uh, But their, um, their relationship is cut off by his family, and she is determined to stay with him and to do anything she can to do that, even to appeal to Queen Victoria herself. Uh, so yeah, I think those all sound like really fascinating stories. And yeah, I'm very excited to read more by Sylvia Townsend Warner. There are also new reprints of Olivia Manning's Balkan trilogy. Uh, so I've never read this before, um, but this uh, this is actually uh, part of a sequence of six books, I believe, two trilogies um, that she wrote. But these are the, the first three. And uh, yeah, these are really beautiful new editions. So it's about a young couple um, who moved to Bucharest in 1939 um, to start a new life there. And obviously, this is before World War II, and it follows their lives um, through the, the events of the war and all of that tumultuous time um, in uh, Romania, um, which was obviously very affected by the war. And I've heard such great things uh, about these books. Um, so yeah, really e eager to explore um, this, this fiction, which is, I think, a lot of people hail as some of the greatest uh, novels about Europe um, from the 20th century. I have some new nonfiction to read as well, because I always try to include some uh, new nonfiction in with my mix of my usual uh, reading of fiction. Uh, so first off, there is this beautiful edition of The Love Letters between uh, Virginia Wolf and Vida Sackville West, Sackville West. And, um, I don't know why I said it like that. Anyway, I'm all up on Virginia Wolf at the moment because I just read the new group biography or the recent, it was published last year, um, the recent group biography, uh, Square Haunting by Francesca Wade. And you know, I love the work of Virginia Wolf. And, uh, but I've actually never read all that much biographical detail about her life. I mean, I've read some of her diaries, and um, but yeah, I've never actually read a biography of Virginia Woolf, even though there's many of them. Um, though I know she had a long-term affair with uh, Vita Sackwell West, and uh, and this is a number of their love letters to each other, interspersed um, with some diary entries, um, giving some of the like personal insight into what was happening. Um, their reflections on their relationship, as well as their letters to each other. And I think that's just going to be so touching and moving to, to read about. And uh, there's this, this wonderful quote from one of the, the letters, uh, which says, What can one say except that I love you, and I've got to live through this strange, quiet evening, thinking of you sitting there alone? That's, oh, it breaks my heart. Then there is a new short book of nonfiction, Shobo Feminism by Sam Mills. And this is looking at the, the question of men who publicly are feminists and uh, speak about feminism in order to advance their careers, but in their private lives um, exhibit chauvinistic tendencies in their interactions with, with women. Um, so that's, I think, a really fascinating question. And Sam Mills looks at this from her own personal interactions with various men, as well as testimonies um, from other people. And last year, I read Sam Mills' uh, wonderful memoir, uh, Fragments of My Father, which was so moving and powerful. And uh, I think she's a great writer and asks really interesting, uh, complex uh, political questions. And so yeah, I'm very much looking forward to reading this. Then there is the memoir Aftershocks by Nadia Owusu. So when the author was only two 
two years old, her mother abandoned her and her baby sister in Tanzania uh, to flee to America. And then when the author was 13 years old, her father um, died of cancer. And so when she was growing up, she moved to many different countries. And in each new country, um, she had to learn a new language and uh, try to find a new sense of home uh, for herself. And so it's about how this has created a very complex sense of identity for her since she's lived in so many different places um, through all these different languages and had many different places she calls home. So I think that sounds very moving and um, also fascinating. I'm also glad to have the new issue of Granta magazine, uh, which I always just really enjoy uh, looking through and reading a story or a poem or two, um, often by a writer that I've not read before. So it uh, introduces me to a number of different new writers' work. And I love how they publish a combination of some short stories, um, some extracts from novels, um, some poetry, but also visual work. Um, so you get new photographs and artworks that are that are reproduced in this and um, and uh, and there's quite a lot of new um, translated work um, that's often included in it as well so yeah I'm looking forward to having you know a leisurely morning thumbing through and reading some of these new pieces temporary by Hilary Leichter this has a really fascinating premise uh, it's about an unnamed woman that holds many different jobs um, at, at different points um, including working on a pirate ship um, so is looking at the the question of uh, modern day workforce but also she has a number of different boyfriends who fulfill different roles in in her life and uh, yeah so I, I think it just sounds like such a fascinating premise for a story and I know it was published um, in America for the first time last year but it's only just coming out in the UK now then there are two debut novels um, which have sort of the common theme of female friendship and uh, just recently in my in my household we've been having a female friendship uh, film marathon where we've watched a number of different movies that are all about female friendship and uh, yeah and so uh, and so this uh, novel Night Shift by Kerr Ladner um, is about a woman who sort of abandons her her life her job and her relationship to become a night shift worker working in an office building cleaning it um, alongside another woman there who she strikes up a friendship with and it's about their connection with each other and personally I I, I once tried to do night shift work in a, in a warehouse like moving things around Around and uh, like I think it started the my shift started at like midnight or, or something but I, I I was like dead on my feet by 2 or 3 a.m. trying to do manual labor through the night and it was just a disaster and I had to leave that job in the middle of my very first shift sorry that was going on slightly a tangent uh, then there is the novel uh, the 100 years of Lenny and Margot by Marianne Cronin and uh, this is uh, about uh, two people who meet two women who meet in a hospital. Um, one is a young woman and the other is a, is a more elderly woman. And they strike up a friendship with each other. And because they're at this sort of crisis point in their life with their, their health, it encourages them to make some quite drastic decisions um, in, in how they want their lives to go uh, moving forward. Next is a really chunky new novel called The Quiet Americans by Scott Anderson. It's almost 500 pages long. and it's it's about a very complex um, subject. So it follows the lives of four different spies who work for the CIA, who during the Cold War uh, travel to different parts of the globe and to different countries, to getting involved in the local politics and trying to influence them in this war against communism. And uh, it's about how things don't quite go right um, with with uh, these these interferences and the long-term consequences of, of that. And so it's a really fascinating, complex subject um, that has a lot of political importance. And I think this sounds absolutely fascinating. Carolina or the Torn Curtain by Marla Shimakowa. I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce her, her surname. Uh, this takes place in Krakow in 1895 when a woman named Zofia is planning a big event, um, but her maid, Carolina, hands in her notice. Uh, but shortly after that, uh, Carolina is found murdered, and Zofia investigates uh, what happened to her, um, which leads her to discover a whole complex um, political web and conspiracy. 
And, uh, and so this is a detective novel. It's actually a sequel. I've not read the first, but I think they're, they're probably independent books that can be read um, separately from each other. And uh, yeah, I'm especially curious to read this because the Nobel Prize winner and International Booker Prize winner Olga Tokorczyk um, says that uh, this is an ingenious marriage of comedy and crime. Then there's a novel I'm not entirely sure I want to, to read or not. It's The Strays of Paris by Jane Smiley. And uh, it's fascinating because, I mean, she's obviously written many uh, great literary novels. And in the past few years, she's written um, more children's books. And the premise of this new novel almost sounds like a children's book story. Um, it's about a racehorse that lives in rural France who one day roams from her stable and ends up in the streets of Paris and wandering the streets of Paris and encountering a number of animals there that she she makes friends with. And so yeah, it sort of sounds like a children's book story, but this is a novel published for adults. And I, I have read one review by a book blogger friend of mine who had quite a mixed response to it, um, who says it's quite a cozy, comforting novel, um, but uh, but yeah, one that doesn't entirely develop its its plot or, or characters um, in a way that's um, necessarily very interesting. So I think this would be good to read as like a, a lovely comforting read but um, but yeah um, I don't know if I'm gonna find it engaging enough to, to really enjoy it or love it and finally I bought a copy of the recent novel Mrs. Death Mrs. Death by Selena Godin um, what a great title for a novel that is and I ordered this from um, Kibworth uh, bookshop because uh, uh, yeah it's just a, a novel that I've been really wanting to get to and I love that because it's their their book of the month um, they sent this uh, signed limited edition of the novel and I used to really love uh, collecting signed books and so yeah I'm glad to, to have this and the premise sounds great so it's about Mrs. Death who has been carrying out her job um, for countless amount of time and um, and she's growing tired of it and, um, and and not speaking out and so she strikes up a relationship with a young writer who starts recording her story and that sounds like a just really fascinating fantastical tale um, so yeah I've and I've heard really great things about this so looking forward to, to finally reading this so those are all the books I want to talk about yeah like I said a huge amount of them um, so let me know uh, if you have read any of these if you would especially recommend them or let me know in the comments uh, which you're especially interested in reading yourself and we can have a little chat about them. So thank you for watching me talk through this big huge pile of new books and I hope you're doing well. I hope the weather is nice where you are and you're reading good things and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.